about who is using our transportation sh system and why. Let me do some introductions at our first table here tonight. Uh, S.J. Morrison for Madison County Transit in Illinois. I mentioned uh, city-centric, I think might have been a word I used. This is a regional topic, I think you would probably argue. We'll talk more about that. Lenora Fisher from Citizens for Modern Transit. And welcome back to the show, Steve Smith, proprietor of the Royale on South Kings Highway. And uh, I'm I, fair to say self-described transit nut, maybe. Is that too, too harsh of a term? I've or? never been called that. Okay, well, half you, that. Okay, half, half that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you're a guy who, who uses this, uh, this uh, the transit Sometimes, system yeah. we're talking about. Uh, who, who else does? Is this evolving? Is this changing? What, what can you guys tell me about what role that our transportation system plays in our city, in our region? Well, I can tell you on behalf of Madison County Transit that about 55% of our ridership currently is transit dependent. Um, those are individuals who don't have another form of transportation. That means there's a large percentage, you know, almost half of our ridership are what we would call discretionary riders. Um, those folks who have a car but are choosing transit uh, for a variety of reasons. And why are they choosing transit? Why, why are they making that, that choice when they can? I think it's, I mean, St. Louis, speaking for St. Louis, I think that there's a value, as you were talking earlier, like the millennials, the people that are um, interested in not having to drive, not having to have another car, or people that know that it's just easier to get to work using the bus or the train. Like, there are people that are just committed to this as a lifestyle choice and a regional choice. And so I think you get a wide range of people, actually, in the region. Steve, I've seen you posting on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram uh, a few different times, your bus routes and different things. I mean, uh, is, it, is it just a hobby for some people or is it, it really a, a vital part of your life? Well, it, it gives you more options on when you get around. Sometimes people feel lost if they don't have their car around them, which is sort of sad because there's actually a, quite a few options around you. And if you really want to be independent, uh, knowing all of your options is very important. Uh, I think it's important for most people the thing is that they don't realize that there's a bus line within walking distance of their home. You should know what line that is, where it goes, and how regularly it runs. And you should just give it a shot every once in a while. It can be incredibly helpful. And it's pretty, pretty easy. I mean, they, like kids use it, you know. It's pretty um, on Twitter right now, this, buses are already uh, popping up on what people are talking about. I think uh, the, the unreliable is coming up in terms of, of bus routes. Uh, it, it, people really like the train a lot, and they like the, kind of the, the, uh, the romance, perhaps, of the train. Mm -hmm. But wh where do you guys fall on this? Uh, or buses, we just heard Ken talking about, that might be our future. Absolutely. I, I think that um, what, one of the things that we could do is to make buses arrive more frequently. Um, and, uh, you know, Ken was talking about, you know, buses, um, you know, taking the place of trains in some ways because they're more nimble, more flexible. Um, we can go to some of the new employment centers and some of the new housing complexes and so on. Um, and, and so I think that bus rapid transit and, uh, and some of those, you know, high frequency um, bus services can sort of act as rubber wheel trains. And I think that's coming and, and Metro certainly has, has moved in that direction. And, and so have we on the Illinois side at Madison County Transit. Metro has uh, also recently launched a new app uh, on their trip planner thing where they are, you can log on and see where the closest bus station is and like if, they're, if the buses are delayed, like where they're at, you can see it all kind of on this map. So it's a really interactive, really engaging thing. So I know the region is really working towards like improving that, making it more accessible so that people know kind of what's available to them and just getting the information out there. But I mean, there's also like old fashioned ways of doing things. Like, I mean, you could have a map up of where this bus route goes at the bus station. But what percentage so. of people are actually really taking it? I think we all, uh, a lot of people, I shouldn't say we all, a lot of people like the idea of having a good transportation system, but how many people are actually taking it and, and why aren't more people taking it? I think some of it might be psychological. There might be some sort of issue. You need to jump over a little bit of a barrier just to be able to do it. Most people will say, I support public transit, but have never taken public transit, especially the bus. And, but they'll take it out of town, mind you, but it's different there. You know, it's a perception that ours... Well, well, does a, it work better out of town? I've had people tell me the buses are faster out of town. I haven't figured out what kind of engines they're putting in those things, <laughs> but uh, I'm, a, you know, I'm kind of a gearhead in a way. I love cars. I've got a couple of them, but you know, these buses, are, they're, they're actually pretty nimble. They're I'm not saying they're perfect, mind you, but they're not any different than anywhere else, really and they're extremely helpful. So if people can kind of get over that barrier 
just try it out a couple of times. You'd be surprised where it can get you. And there's a lot of versatility that can, you can introduce into your life if you just start using it just a little bit. You don't have to give up your car. Or, but the thing is, is, you can take your bike, throw it on the front of the bus, and you can extend the range of where you're going to ride your bike. So the bus is, is, the, is the bus the answer? I love, I, I said, ro the romance of the train. I love the Metrolink. I'm going to see, let's see, one, two, three. I live about six blocks from the Metrolink, and I, mm -hmm. uh, I drove here tonight. Uh, yeah. why, I, I like it. I don't well, take it. I know why you do that, because we have other transportation policies that, well, look around us here in Grand Center. There's a lot of flat property around here where it makes it easy for you to drive your car. If we were in Times Square, you wouldn't be driving your car. You would definitely be walking to take the train. Okay, so We've made policies so it would make it driving so much easier. and We subsidize everything to go that direction. Now, we also, the buses still can be used to this helpful, but we also need to kind of think about our overall transportation policies to make the, uh, this easier. And we could start talking about toll roads. We could start talking about all the you know, user-driven uh, costs. I agree with what you said earlier, mm -hmm. Steve, too, about the bikes on the buses. Mm -hmm. That's something that, you know, Madison County Transit implemented early on, and I know Metro has, too. Very helpful. Um, and, you know, MCT also has 115 miles of bikeways in Madison County. And so one of the things that we've done is not only have the bikes, bike racks on the buses, but we also have bus stops at trailheads so that folks can extend their trip seamlessly beyond the bus stop. And I think that that's something that, uh, that everybody could take advantage of a little more, even in the city. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, and it's just its so simple. I, I just think with everybody riding their bikes as much as they do and being able to run over to Illinois, there's actually quite a few things that you can do over on that but side. But it's simple. I'm, I'm sorry to be the, the wet blanket like, here, but you, it's you, simple you, to get in my car and come here, yes. and, I'm the, and we're not in Times Square. It's easy to drive. It's easy right, to park. Right. So why should I do anything different? Well, you say you support public transit, don't you? I'm I'm I, I'm I'm unbiased in this conversation, but yes, but yes, I, I've already admitted to liking the idea of having the MetroLink connected to my neighborhood. But for some reason, I don't use it. it, it I think it can be a convenience piece too for commuting. You know, for those who have a longer commute, um, being able to relax, being able to sit back, enjoy the ride, not worry about you know bumper to bumper traffic. Um, I think that that convenience piece is important to people. They want to be able to relax and um, or or be more productive on their commute you know um, read the morning That's paper true. or how, how important is it to I, I know you guys try to listen uh, to what your customers are saying how important is that to be kind of responsive on the small scale in terms of if you see people walking in a certain area you try to move to where they are is that something you do and, and, and what and why it's extremely critical um, not only listening to our passengers, listening to our drivers, listening to community members, influencers. Um, and th that's what's nice about the bus system is that we do have that opportunity to um, find out those places. Um, recently, there is a new development um, in the Pontoon Beach area, Gateway Commerce Center. It employs 5,000 full and part-time employees. And so um, we were able to get a number of routes um, from a variety of different areas into the Gateway Commerce Center. And, you know, initially we saw folks walking along Illinois 111 and, and you know, not being able to literally get to work. Um, and so, I, yeah, I, I think that uh, it's nice when the buses can kind of step in and help connect people to jobs. Lenore, I know when you're with Citizens for Modern Transit, you're, you're taking the temperature of the community. How, what is the perception? Is it changing? I think so. I think it changes uh, just with the gener like the generational shift. Like as younger generations, like we were talking about, the millennials, I think are, are really a lot more open to transit, bus, train, all of it. Uh, but the, what's one thing that's puzzling to me, and that I would like to, that I almost want to ask back to the community, is just well, like so, why? What is the barrier? So you're asking us, but I'd be curious to know, like, what the public's barrier is, because within living memory, like 50 years ago, a lot of we have senior citizen uh, program for a walking program for senior citizens that, like, they all come up to me and talked about how like they rode the bus over throughout the entire system. So that's living memory that people took transit and know it and use it and have used it in their lifetime. So like what happened in between? And what is that about? And like how do we respond to that? Because this is a transit oriented city. Like we've had it, we had it before, we have it now. It's a great system and like there's this kind of gap in between and it I don't know I just I'd be curious. Well I